Let's move on and talk about slice thickness resolution. You might ask, what is slice thickness resolution? And why is it important? So far, we've been discussing spatial resolution within the B-mode image plane, as shown in the cartoon below. Yellow bar denotes the transducer surface, which gives out the ultrasound beam, which is fan out, as indicated by the light blue signals. In the X direction, denoted by the white line, which is parallel to beam travel, is the X direction describing axial resolution. Perpendicular to the X line of travel is the Y direction, which is perpendicular to beam travel and is described by lateral resolution. Unlike the lateral and axial resolution, slice thickness is in the Z direction, which is perpendicular to beam mode scan plane. In actuality, it limits the resolution of the array scanners. However, it is not a function of ultrasound frequency, as is the case for the lateral and axial resolutions. Rather, it is defined by the dimension of the transducer element, which is most often the size of the transducer scan head that is formed typically with a fixed lens. Clinically, it creates a fill-in defect if you're measuring away from the focal zone. Here's a cartoon of the spatial variation of the slice thickness plane. You can see that near the transducer surface, you have a finite thickness of the Z direction. It gets even bigger in the far field away from the focal zone. However, right at NZL or at the focal length, slice thickness is minimum. The partial volume that is depicted in the previous slide show that slice thickness has a thick volume near transducer surface. It is narrowest at the focal depth. As it fans out beyond the focal distance, it has an even thicker volume compared to at the surface. Therefore, if you're trying to resolve reflectors that are near the resolution limit of the transducer element at the focal depth, you'll become out of focus if you're going away from the focal zone. Practically speaking, by employing an annular array, you are able to bypass the slight thickness limitation because by optimizing lateral resolution in an annular array, you optimize the slight thickness resolution as well. Slight thickness presents an advantage in uh, uh, scanning if you use an annular array because it can uh, resolve small focal masses. A potential fix to the slice thickness problem is instead of using a one-dimensional array, use a 2D array so that you can independently adjust both XY, XZ, and YZ planes. Let's do a question. Which of the following parameters is not a function of transducer frequency? Is it A, near field length? Is it B, axial resolution? Is it C, lateral resolution? Or is it D, slice thickness resolution? So think back on all the different components that we discussed so far in this lecture and ask yourself which one is not a function of frequency. The response that's correct is D, slice thickness resolution. Recall that near field length, axial resolution, lateral resolution are all dependent on frequency. But slice thickness resolution is limited strictly by transducer design, namely the focal length. If you operate outside the focal zone, you're susceptible to slice thickness variability. So far, we've been talking about single element focus or non-focus transducers. Let's move on to transducer arrays, which could be linear, curvilinear, phased array, or mechanical. Let's first talk about linear arrays. A linear array consists of multiple transducer elements that are pulsed sequentially to produce a rectangular scan pattern. At any one time, only one element or subset of elements is in operation. The echoes are received before the next element is excited. Focusing is done electronically. An example is a 64 element array with a pulse repetition rate of 2 kHz. This picture is a typical linear array. The cartoon rendition shows a rectangular profile with multiple basal electric elements at the surface. You scan 
each element or group of elements from left to right, sequentially, as we mentioned previously, to produce a rectangular scan pattern of the soft tissue of interest. This is an example of some surface uh, blood vessels that are scanned using the linear array. In summary, a linear array has a beam that is focused electronically, that is steered electronically, and is done via sequential scans of a subset of transducer elements. Next, let's talk about curvilinear array. This is an example of one. Typically, it consists of 128 elements, again like the linear array. One element or a subset of elements uh, scan sequentially. Focusing is done electronically, and it yields a trapezoidal scan pattern. Here is a cartoon of a curvilinear array as it gives off the ultrasound pulses and scan sequentially from left to right. You create a trapezoidal scan pattern of the resulting soft tissue of interest. Here you see an example of the trapezoidal pattern of the Morrison pouch. In summary, the curvilinear array beam is focused electronically, is steered electronically, and again is sequentially scanned via a subset of transducer elements. Let's move on to curvilinear phase array. A phase array is different from the linear or the curvilinear arrays that we talked about earlier because all elements are scanned at the same time. It consists of 128 to 256 elements. Electronic delays allow the electronic beam to be steered precisely. Beam focusing is done electronically. It produces a pi slice scan pattern. Here's a cartoon rendition of the phase array. There's an element where it's focused. Notice all elements are steered at the same time. And they're focused going from left to right, steering at the same plane of interest, going from left to right in this example. You notice clinically you can measure, uh, do a scan with the typical pie slice view. Now how does phasing work? It involves the electronic delay generator attached to the back of the transducers. Here you have an eight element array, has the capability to apply sequential delays to each element. You notice here that the transducer elements and the excitation pulses are labeled. If no delays are introduced, the wavefront will be per perpendicular to the transducer surface, as follows. No delays, each element produces an ultrasound pulse with the characteristic wavefront that are in sync with one another. Therefore, if you draw a line horizontal to the front edge of the wavefront, you have the direction of the wavefront, which is straight ahead. So with no delays, the beam goes straight ahead. Now assume that delays are sequentially applied from left to right of the transducer. So you have a left to right delay sequence as follows. So less delay on the left, more delay on the right. In this case, the ultrasound beam is far ahead on the left side compared to the right side. Therefore, the wavefront is pointing to the right as shown by the vector. So wavefront points to the right. As you can guess, if you flip the sequencing electronically, applying delays from right to left, the resulting wavefront will point to the left. In summary, for phase arrays, the beam focusing is done electronically, beam steering is done electronically. And unlike linear and curvilinear arrays, phase arrays scan the entire set of transducer elements by applying sequential electronic delays. Compared to non-phase arrays, phase arrays have the advantage of having a smaller transducer footprint, giving precise beam focusing and steering, as well as higher sensitivity and larger dynamic range. Phase arrays reduce the low amplitude echoes inherent in ultrasound reflections. This, in effect, removes grading and side lobes from the ultrasound signals. Thus, it is ideal for cardiac imaging, and yet is poor for abdominal imaging. 